What's up everybody, my name is Quinten and welcome back to another video on my channel. Today with F123, yes, I've streamed this a couple months ago with a friend of mine and I thought why not make a series, so that's what I'm gonna do. I'll be making a 16 race series with a championship contender car. My teammate in this series is Jacques Villeneuve, so that means that that's an icon teammate, because obviously you cannot get Jacques Villeneuve, he's not driving anymore. So Jack Villeneuve will be my teammate for, I guess, this season. We can change it in next seasons or maybe halfway through the season if you guys would like someone else. So 16 races and obviously starting with Bahrain. This video, I did not include qualifying and that's because I'm stupid. I will be showing the race, obviously, and I will not be live commenting on the race. If you want me to give uh, like a live commentary, while I'm racing, leave it down in the comments. I can try that as well. But for now, I'll just give, I'll just comment it like afterwards. 16 races, uh, starting with, of course, the Bahrain, as you can see here, and then with um, Jeddah and Australia, and move on, move on. So if you like this, obviously leave a like. If you want to, please subscribe. And I'll say, let's get on with it. testing no more practice this is the real deal and it's make or break here at round one of this year's formula one world championship formula one returns to the desert today on this exceptional 3.36 mile circuit 15 corners provide plenty of overtaking opportunities and it could be a strategic race this one with Sakia notorious for eating up the rear tires watch out for drivers managing their rubber at some point during the grand prix before we begin, let's take a quick look at the grid lineup for today's race. Lawrence lines up on pole position. Just edging out Alex Albon, who'll start from P2. Moving on to the rest of the grid, we have Villeneuve, Sainz, Verstappen, Perez, Hamilton, Leclerc, Oscar Piastri, Russell, Norris, Sonoda, Ocon, Fernando Alonso, Joe, Magnussen, Gasly, Bottas, Stroll, Hulkenberg, Ricardo, and Logan Sargent. It's almost time for those five red lights to go out then. Let's see who can prevail today. A new season then, a clean slate where anything could happen. Anthony Davidson is with me today as once again we get another year of Formula One underway. We're into those tense few minutes before the first race then. Everyone's a little bit nervous about reliability. They haven't been running in the hot, turbulent wake of other cars in practice. And they've not been pushing at 100% for long durations. Let's hope no one has to deal with any nasty surprises. OK, mate, so we got pole. That's in the bag. Now let's go and get the double with the race win. Come on. Mark being very optimistic with uh, what he wants. So for strategy today, you can see me fiddling around with um, st possible strategies, things I want to try. Seeing back to this, maybe I should have tried the softs and then get the hearts to the end, but I just went with the regular strategy. Just because it's the first race, um, I want to see what the car, the car responds to, the tires, how the car responds on the track. Um, so you see me fiddling around with things, but you see me here also the two-stop strategy, which surprisingly, the soft tire was not faster than the medium tire, which I was surprised by, but well. Uh, you saw that I changed it, but I'm just going back here to my regular strategy. Well, not my regular strategy, the strategy the game gave me, so... Um, you'll see me changing it back, there we go, to the medium, and just keep it at the default one. Uh, for fuel, I'm gonna do 30.5 laps, I thought that 31.7 was a bit, a bit much, so I went 30.5. And yeah, that's about everything I went for on strategy. So obviously before the race starts, first and foremost, it's the formation lap. Um, 
just warming up the tires what Mark's gonna say here as well I'll just get back to like the beginning phase so where I'm actually getting to my grid spot you see tires are at 87 rear and 84 83 on front which is not that good I would have liked my front tires to be like that a little bit warmer but it's decent but it's not that good as you see it's getting more and more blue and I'm here I'm actually burning my rear tires for extra heat in my rear tires so I have um, more grip when I'm starting 91 and 90 degrees is actually really good but oh, 48 and 43 not that good we get a purple on the, par on the parking which is not that hard and just waiting on the grid to form just waiting on the grid to form as I think that's Logan Sargent who is the final one to pull up so taking one final look back and it's five lights and away we go I'm not getting a particular good start as you can see I'm getting a lot a lot of wheel spin and second phase as well second phase is not that good either album is getting past me but I'm fighting it I'm not holding back deep dive around the outside which makes, which makes the inside for the second turn bam on my head turn three now I'm fully ahead of the of Alex Albon who's now fighting with Carlos Sainz behind me still hoping he's not bothering me he is bombing me a little bit but I don't care I'm holding that apex and I'm in front I kept my pole position from the start and for now it'll just be driving around hoping to keep that position behind me Sainz is still fighting with Albon Sainz has got past now and notice both Red Bulls have started on the softs which I was surprised by considering it cost me like extra 4 seconds when I would try the strategy turn 10, not a great turn that makes it easy for Sainz to uh, come back to me he's actually gonna dive me as well on the outside but I prevent him to take the inside, hold the apex, run wide and I just keep the position uh, Verstappen is still fiddling with his teammate Paris uh, same goes for Albon, Sainz is right on my tail I actually fuck up this corner, which um, I get back to the racing line, which might be my mistake here, because Sainz gets a little um, surprised by that, and Albon jumps in again. Uh, still in front of this, Albon is fighting Sainz, but Sainz has passed Albon again. So, next, that's lap 1. Uh, Mark's going to say as well, that's good for lap 1, because we are on, uh, we're still on our pole position. Then, Turn one out of nowhere. Look at the time screens. For stopping, just cuts, gets to my inside. I do not expect this. I hear contact, and I'm thinking, what the fuck is happening? So I look to left and I look behind me and I see Verstappen and I'm like, what the fuck? How? Did, where did he come from? So now I have a Red Bull behind me with softer tires and obviously a better driver than I am. So I'm trying to play the slipstream using all the battery I can onto the uh, main straight for lap 3 getting a little wobble out of the final corner and there goes Verstappen I hated myself when this happened bit too confident on the... bit too confident on the throttle and I just wobbled it side to side with signs on the outside getting a little wide again missing my braking point which means that signs can click past me without any problems getting the DRS so it's not gonna be enough now you see Perez is behind me and that's gonna be for basically the whole fucking race. It's lap 4 here. I'm trying to break this break the slipstream, which does not help. Perez gets close, I'm going to the inside. Breaking a bit later than him, but he gets in on the outside, I squeeze him out, and corner still for me, so I keep the position. Meanwhile to front, Verstappen almost three seconds ahead, that's one lap later, almost three seconds ahead. Sainz also going by Verstappen, 1.1, 1.5 seconds ahead, Press tying again to pass me, but I refuse and I'm still ahead. Lap 6 this time, again Perez is behind me, trying, getting getting a little bit oversteer here, which fucks up my exit. Perez is behind me, he's gonna dive me on the inside, picks his nose on the inside, I leave enough space to make a little bit of contact, but I keep the position, that's what I try, that's what I'm trying to do here. 
Then again, lap 7, same old thing, Press is behind me. But this time he's a lot closer than he used to be, because he's already on my tail before the main straight. And what I do here, I bend a lift of a throttle so I get the DRS on the main straight. This is a bit of a mind game, but that's a tip for everyone. If he's gonna pass you before the DRS detection point, lift of the throttle. As you can see here, I get the DRS, I can use battery, I have slipstream, I can easily pass him again, which is some which is what I'm gonna do. Moving to the inside, oh no, again the outside. Breaking later, having the outside on, t on turn 1 means I get the outside on turn inside on turn 2, sorry. Um, and that's where I get the corner. He gets the DRS, but this race is not long enough to pass me again, so I'm fine. And he's still holding me though, he's very, he's very close to me, like he's not giving up. Lap 9, press still, hot pursuit of me. He passes me here, but I get the DRS because this is the DRS detection point. I hit him a little bit, and that's my bad. Um, and because I hit him, I can get back on the inside here. We're side by side when we exit turn 3, but I have the DRS, that just makes me faster. Um, when we go into turn 4, I'm ahead. <clears throat> I'm ahead into turn 4, and still he's gonna hold me. And this is what, like, really surprised me. He stayed out very long on those soft tires. My thing said my soft would be like 64, 60, maybe 70 percent when I would go in for my hard tire then. So I was really surprised that the Red Bulls could actually, because for Stappen too, the Red Bulls could like keep those tires um, so good for so long. Again, Perez still behind me. Point uh, three tenths behind me, it's at five now because he had a bad corner. Catching up again because he has a bad exit. I'm coming to the final straight before main straight again. And Perez will obviously try to get past me again. I'm here again trying to break the slipstream, um, which does not help because he's two tenths near me. I uh, get on the final corner. I get a decent exit. As I might say, I get a better exit in Paris, but obviously he has slipstream and the rest, so I'm again trying to break the slipstream, trying to break the slipstream here. Breaking on 100, 150 meters, and I'm fine. But in the second straight. I don't know, but every single time the AI make turn 1, 2, 3 a lot better than I do. So it, now we're on lap 10. Press again did not pit, which again surprises me a lot. Like I'm actually, I'm still surprised he still didn't pit. How were his tires still that good? I kind of missed my breaking point here, so I had a bad turn, which means he's alongside me. I cut him off, and I get a little bit wobble, but I saved it. And I'm thinking where's Paris? All of a sudden he's fighting with Leclerc, and I think. He's fighting with Leclerc, and I think that that's my bad with the bubble I had. Um, so, lap 12, finally, Verstappen pits. It's the first one of the soft runners that goes into the box, which means that Sainz is now leading the race. Verstappen goes onto mediums, which I was also surprised about. Because I got my mediums to lap 14, that was my pit window. I was genuinely surprised that these guys could make 14, 15 laps on their mediums and 14 laps or 13 laps because Perez is going in now he's done exactly the same distance on his soft tires than Leclerc has on his mediums and that's insane like that's crazy I don't know how they did that I'm gonna have to look into that for next race so upcoming lap 14 he's our oh, pit lap I'm checking my tires I had about 50% average on my tires which was like okay I'm done going to pits um, getting those hard tires on, because that's, that's a new tire. Um, of course, 79 kilometers an hour when we enter the pit lane. Um, and we go purple on the turning, because that's also a feature in F123, where you actually determine if you're too early, too late, how your pit stop goes, so that's actually a cool thing. But we get a 2.3 stop time, 2.3 second stop time, which is actually good. And we exit again right in front of Perez. So his undercut did not work. I managed to stay ahead of him. 
but he's going to haunt me for the rest of the race and I don't like that. He's in hot pursuit of me, actually gets alongside me. Um, I don't know if he has DRS, but I'm on the inside here so I can get an early apex and I, I can get an early apex and I can just stay ahead. Um, so this also is my outlap, so that means that there's not gonna be my tires are gonna be very cold still, so I'm gonna have to manage that too. Lap 15 then, um, again back straight. Paris is still behind me, and I'm gonna do the exact same thing as I did before. Just blend out the throttle to make sure that I get this DRS here. And it looks like I'm an actual idiot because I did not. I didn't build up the trouble and I did not get the DRS, which could have actually saved me some time here. Yeah, well that sucks. Back into turn one, side by side I'm on the outside, which makes it, which makes it the inside for turn two, but I, mean, I get a lot of oversteer so I have to correct. Doesn't matter, turn three into turn four DRS battery and I'm past him again. I have the apex here so I can run wide and there's nothing he can do. See, and then on to turn seven, uh, six, seven, and eight. Turn eight, and then turn nine and ten. What's the thing with turn nine and ten? It's you're braking while you're turning. So this corner is actually a very hard corner to do to get like right with braking and stuff. You're gonna see me mess this up a lot. Uh, again, Paris behind me. As a better accident me. But does not pass me, which actually, but I'm thinking about it, he should have been able to pass me because he had the DRS and battery, but you don't hear me complaining. Lap 16, back on the main straight again, press still behind me, 2.5 uh, tenths now, 2.9, 2.5, he's getting closer. Uh, I paused this because I'm rearranging my paddles, because they were, I'm always pushing them away instead of them staying in place, so... Again, you see me blending off the throttle, so I get the DRS here. Actually, hit Paris a little bit. I'm sorry, Paris. But I get the DRS here, uh, which means I get an easy pass. I don't. Again, I don't know why he turns to the right here. He can clearly faster, and just breaking later, having the apex, and yeah, I just it was just my corner. I was almost a car length to the head. Lap 21 now. Paris does me on the inside, but I was way ahead, so I got the corner anyway, and I just keep on pushing. Okay, so the gap to the car and I see yellows on turn one and two, and I'm like, what happened there? And get a notification here, Alex Albon is out of the session. Due to a mechanical failure. That sucks for Williams, and that sucks for Alex. Then, again, round 21, the end, Paris, I didn't pass, because, as I said again, I hit him here and he kind of slides, he gets overstayed, that's 100% that's my fault. So I hit him, I let him pass because I got the DRS. With um, overtake, I get another uh, overtake with the overtake button, with battery. I get him again on turn 1, leave space on the inside. Outside of turn 1, makes the inside of turn 2, and that's where I pass him. Still, he's gonna hold me because he's very close, and all of a sudden Russell joins the party too. I break a lot later than he does, I get to the outside, and have a better exit, so... Um, which means I get the position. Okay, oh, not get the position, ahead, I keep the position. Lap 22. Uh, and he's gonna hold me till the end of the race, like, it's insane. Lap 24 here. I get a little, little bit of a wobble, and that's when my engineer says five laps of fuel, and I'm like, oh, I'm fine, you know, it's four and a half laps left, I'm, I'm, I'm done, you know, so I can cruise home. But then I open my MFD and I see this, minus 0 0.3, 0 0.03, which means I'm negative on fuel and I'm not gonna make it to the end of the race. And I'm panicking. I'm like, fuck. Paris is still right behind me. Paris is haunting me still. We're a lap, a lap further, minus 11 now. Which means he has gone up 
about 0 0.10 on the fuel. Oh, gone down 0 0.10 on the fuel. 27 minus 17. And I'm lifting and coasting. When I'm entering corners now, I'm lifting. S staying behind Perez, of course. But still, I'm lifting. Getting the DRS again. Minus 17. Two laps of fuel remaining. I'm, get I'm actually panicking here because I'm like, fuck, I'm not gonna make it. I'm just not gonna make it. And then we go on to the final lap. I'm in minus, minus negative. I'm in minus 25. So I'm like, minus 0 0.25. And I'm like, we get this insane time from on Paris. And I'm like, yeah, hope I can pull away and um, build up enough margin so that the fuel does not haunt me. Because this lap was actual torture. I'm really trying to keep Paris behind, trying to nail every single corner. Not giving me uh, the gap between the, the gap to signs there. Trying to nail every single corner, trying to short shift left where needed. Also for my battery, so I can use battery when I have to. Paris is on 0 0.5, so on 5 tenths behind me. That's not a lot. I got a lot of oversteer here. Lose the balance of the car after control, after like correct. Yeah, pretty much empty. It's basically empty. And when I'm going here onto the first right hand, you're gonna hear the fuel. There it is. And we enter low fuel mode, which means fuel's almost stopped. And there's nothing I can do here. I'm, I, I'm turning on my battery, hoping I can still hold him behind. And all of a sudden, there's like fuel left. My teammate has also joined the party. Paris gets ahead. If I would have had no fuel there, I would have been able to switch back, but I didn't. And there was my teammate. And in a sense of three corners, and that's the end of the race. to uh, uh, third turns into fifth. And that actually sucks for a first race. Russell gets driver of the day because he made up a lot of places. Um, but I would have loved the podium in my first race. I would have loved the podium. Smiling faces on the pit wall then after that superb win here at Sakir. And quite so, a brilliant effort from the whole team. Well, Anthony Davidson, a resounding victory today. But what set them apart from the rest? I feel like consistency was probably the key today. There's being quick, and then there's being quick lap after lap after lap. If you can do that, you can capitalize on other people's errors without making many of your own. And that's an approach that can push you a long way up the field. Red Bull are our winners today after showcasing some incredible driving. There's been a huge push from them lately to stay competitive with the other teams. And they're certainly proving themselves. So let's review the updated driver standings. Max Verstappen's excellent result today sees him take over as the new leader of the Drivers' Championship. So, Anthony Davidson, who would you rank as your driver of the day? Max Verstappen seemed to just effortlessly weave through the other drivers today without a care in the world. He was definitely my driver of choice. It's time to check out the constructors' standings and Red Bull take over as championship leaders. Well, what an end to another fantastic weekend of racing. Thanks to everyone who joined us, and we'll see you for the next one. Yeah, so Jacques Villeneuve getting fourth there, uh, Sergio Perez getting ahead of me, which actually sucked, but, well, low fuel and everything, so I'm happy Jacques Villeneuve ended up before me. Um, that's the end of the Bahrain Grand Prix. Next up will be Saudi Arabia, so I hope you liked. If you did, leave a like, also subscribe, and... I guess I'll see you in the next race for um, Saudi Arabia.